Hey guys, time to do another video. It's been about a month. I'm going to do another chip amp video. I'm going to do one of the TDA 2050 and LM1875. Fantastic little amplifier chips. They're what I consider hi-fi. And uh, like I said in the other video, there's not really a definition or, you know, a... Uh, criteria that says something is hi-fi or something doesn't meet that well I have my own little personal thing personal standard and I consider that if it the total harmonic distortion rating is under 0.1 percent or one tenth of a percent then it makes it a hi-fi audio chip yeah a lot of uh, chips and you know stereo receivers and things like that don't meet that but um, these chips if used properly can go under 0.1 percent and uh, we'll take a look at that here in a minute well first off uh, talk about the TDA 2050 and here is my uh, data book audio and radio products from 1987 it's just a 7 p.m. Just a uh, book full of data sheets of their different IC chips meant for audio and radio use. Well, if you see here, there's the TDA 2030A, then there's the TDA 2040, but no TDA 2050 hasn't come out yet, wasn't made yet. Well, here is my um, data sheet book of the video. Um, products SGS Thompson and uh, it's about the time they changed their name to ST Microelectronics they're still using this together with their new name the SGS Thompson and this old book here you know they were just uh, using their old SGS logo right there but anyhow and again, this is the 1991, and here it is. It's a preliminary data, so it's not actually out yet. They're just giving you the, you know, pro, you know basic data sheet information here on the new product. So yeah, it, it must have come out around that time, 91, 92. Well, here's my National Semiconductor data sheet book sent from DigiKey many, many years ago, probably about 20 years ago. This is a, uh, yeah, 1993, and the LM1875 is in that data book. So, I don't know, I don't have another one to reference. I don't know when the LM1875 come out, but um, gives you a lot of good information about it. Of course, you can download these these data sheets online now and uh, you can see the distortion performance there the camera would focus you know that's 0.1 percent at the top of the the chart there and you, you see the distortion curves way down there close to the bottom of the chart so it's a excellent little chip for making a hi-fi amplifier well, okay, I have the uh, empty breadboard, socket board, and a couple chips. So I'm going to uh, put it together on the board, and we'll come back here and have a listen to it. Okay, it's all assembled. Doesn't take much room at all on the breadboard, does it? Very simple circuit. Well, I will get a heat sink mounted. Now... I see a lot of people using undersized heat sinks. You really need a large heat sink to properly cool these things. This big old heat sink here, it's not such a small amplifier anymore, is it, with this thing attached? But this one, you could, uh, you could cool a couple channels worth with this thing. Maybe even a third channel, but I'm conservative. I like to keep my stuff cool, and I would use heat sink this size for two channels nice thing about this chip is the negative feedback terminal is 
brought out to a pin so you can set the gain to whatever you need. And uh, check out my last channel about setting the gain for various usages. Like, uh, you know, you need a little bit more gain if you're going to use it with a uh, headphone type uh, music player because the output's weaker. But yeah, check out my other video. I'll talk more on that. Um, I don't remember if I mentioned it before, but uh, these are good for 20, 25 watts of output, clean power, measured clean power. Um, don't try to push them beyond that. If you need more power, go to something bigger. Go to a LM um, 3886 or something like that. But, you know, I, I'm to the point, I don't like to blast the music, blow my hearing out. I, I just like to sit down and relax and enjoy some music at a decent volume. And these chips do pretty well for that. They handle it just fine. If you got efficient speakers, yeah, they can, you can still crank up the music pretty loud. But, you know, I really don't need any more power than 10 or 20 watts. Which chip is my favorite, the TDA-2050 or the LM-1875? Hmm. <laughs> used to like the TDA-2050 the best, but I don't know. Um, one thing I liked about the TDA-2050 at first, uh, at a given supply voltage, it puts out just a little bit more power than the LM-1875, and it has a higher maximum current rating at 5 amps 1875 is 4 however when I tested this and compared it to the, the older TDA 2040 it seems the protection circuitry was kicking in at about 3.5 amps and it was the same as the TDA 2040 which is what rated less so what are they doing are they like using um, TDA 2040 die inside these things I don't know maybe ones that performed a little better they're putting in these I'm not sure what they're doing there they are authentic I got them from DigiKey and I should mention uh, don't buy the stuff from eBay I've tried a couple times and never got authentic parts it all comes from China it's all fake and I actually tested them and the fakes at a given supply voltage put out considerably less power and in some cases they don't even have the protection circuitry these chips are really rugged I can short circuit the output they handle it just fine As soon as I short the uh, output on the fake ones the chip blows up crack and it smokes and I when I took the uh, cover off one of the die or one of the uh, ICs and I could see the silicon dye inside the fake ones had like the dye was about one third the size I kid you not <laughs> it's just the way the Chinese do it they, they fake stuff and not to pick on the Chinese I mean a lot of products they have are good it's just some companies in China are putting out fakes the power transistors in these things take up half the dye so, you know, they're skimping on that. There's no way that chip's going to last very long. And it's going to quit on you. So just avoid eBay. You're, just, you're not going to get real ones on eBay. Now, the sad news with the TDA 2050 is that, well, they quit making them. Last September 2013, um, ST Microelectronics canned about half of their uh, analog ICs and the 2050 was one of them sadly one of my favorite ships but um, the LM1875 I'm going to have to do more testing see how its uh, protection circuitry works and I might even find it to be a better chip so so right now I don't know which one I would pick so because the 2050 is history well, TDA, or I'm sorry, the LM1875 is probably the one to go for now. Okay, um, yeah, I'm going to finish assembling this, and uh, we'll 
finally uh, hook it up here and see what it sounds like. And uh, like I always say in the videos, signal ground and power ground, keeping them separate is very important to keep the chip from giving you distortions and uh, oscillations. Now, um, breadboards are not the ideal thing. They're just for prototyping because uh, if I hook this up to a distortion analyzer and I wiggle the components, the change in resistance in the contact point when I do that actually makes the distortion jump up and down. So yeah, these are not the greatest thing to uh, test distortion of an audio amplifier on. So uh, video is getting long, so I'm going to jump right to it here. Okay, we're heat synced and wired up. Got the dual supply going here, music player, connected down to the speaker. One channel, of course, and we'll just give it a quick listen. I don't know how the camera picked that up, but first I heard some distortion because it had the power supply set too low. It was like plus or minus seven and a half volts, so I cranked it up some. Because at the volume I had it, it was clipping a bit. But turned it up and it sounded clear as a bell. Very good. Very easy to use. Highly recommend these chips. Certainly fun. And we're going to do one last thing before I end the video. Another thing you can use these chips for are servo controllers, since they are essentially power op amps. So I have a motor connected here. I removed the coupling capacitor from the input and the capacitor from the negative feedback loop. And I'm using this Radio Shack um, little uh, experimenter lab kit. I'm using the uh, potentiometer on here uh, connected to the positive and negative supply and the center tap is connected to the you know, the uh, wiper arm on the potentiometer. And as I adjust it, it'll turn one way. If I go back the other way, it'll rotate the opposite way. And it'll start slowly as I crank it up, it'll go faster. Ah, pretty neat. Well, that's all I have here. Appreciate everybody watching, and thanks a lot.